Fuck your Australian, I suppose. That's it. Yeah, there you go. Um, Stella's Stav- Stav- gotten kind of... She's really badass. This yeah. Yeah. Let's just say. Gracefully she, badass. Very gracefully. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Creepily, almost. Like, she really kind of just took over power just so quietly. Yeah. Was this always her kind of attitude and personality? Like, she's always, like, the, like the neck turning yeah. head? I, 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 I don't think it, it was... Um, that premeditated actually I think that Stammer's not a bad conniving character she's not uh, Stammer just uh, doesn't like objects in her way and she when she's on the move or she's trying to achieve an objective if you are in that way you will be removed <laughs> and, and, and you know what she doesn't want to hurt you she doesn't want to remove you but you know what she needs to reach her objective and she's very focused on that focused on succeeding she's very ambitious Um, so I think this situation arose I think that if her damn husband Daytac had been quite so stupid and stabbed Colonel Marsh in the library with a letter (laughs) 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 game we should all play I'm just like okay I'm going to buy it on the floor Uh, then then I don't think she would have been forced to take action Uh, I think that the wheels started turning uh, when she started getting close to Kenya. Kenya uh, made her realize she was living in a, a new world. You know, that was our tagline for the first season. It's a new world. Well, it wasn't a new world for like Stama. It was the same old bloody world that she had always lived, that her mother had lived, that every woman in the history of Castleton's had lived. And it was a really repressive one. And she began to feel some resentment or some some kind of questions come up at the end of the first season and then and then Daytac really kind of power charged that by getting sent off to Camp Reverie. So speaking of Kenya, uh, Shtama doesn't seem to be too upset over Kenya's being gone, and the rumor is that she returns. Can you share anything on that? Um, I think that you never really know how Stama feels. I think she always puts a, a pretty good front on it, and, and actually, in the in the any in any scenes that have uh, where she where Stama uh, where Kenya has been mentioned, uh, which have mainly been scenes with Julie, uh, Kenya's name has come up or she's been alluded to. I think that you see that Stama is is pretty emotional and pretty cut up about that. And it's not just because she cares about, she definitely cares about um, Amanda as well. Amanda is, is the closest thing that, that Stama has to a friend. Uh, maybe because she does miss Kenya and she wants to kind of have that piece of rose water a little bit close to her, that energy close to her. And I think that I think through her relationship with Amanda and through the season, you'll see her regret the mistake of killing Kenya even more. Um, and, and then when she is forced to question whether Kenya is alive or dead, you see such a mixture of feelings in Stama. You see joy mixed with the horror of being discovered, uh, with confusion, relief. I mean, it's a lot of very uh, relatable emotions uh, happen to uh, stomach, and that is part of her humanization, really. She starts to be humanized because... You know, she didn't know what she didn't know before, and, and, and she's, it, you know, she's learning what she is for the first time. Can you talk about uh, shooting the bathtub scene with uh-huh. Rafe? Yeah. Because that was... <laughs> that was what? Oh, I was dying. I was just like, oh my god. It was, um, it was a really interesting scene because... Well, first of all, he's a great comedic actor, um, and he, he, he's just enormous fun. And it was just such a weird one. Like, Graf is in my bar, and, and then on top of that, Graham Green is in my bar. <laughs> it was just, you know, there was nowhere to hide. And 
I, 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 always, I always know, you, you know, as actors, you, you try to be as realistic as possible. And what you often do as an actor is you try to get very in touch with your impulses. And, you know, there's exercises that we do, that there are techniques that we do to kind of hone that muscle, to be really honest about the instinct that comes up in you. And often, because I'm playing an alien, I can't do that. Or if I do have that instinct, I'll use the exact opposite one. And, and you know, the bath scenes are a good example of that. I just want to go like this. <laughs> and I just want to use my head. And I just want to kind of do this. And I want to hunch over with my shoulders. And then, you know, I remember in the first season, it was a decision I made and I kind of come to regret sometimes that I've stuck to it. Is, you know, why would an alien woman necessarily have the same hang-ups as human women? Our, our human female hang-ups are distinctly human female. You don't see gazelles walking around kind of slowly, <laughs> kind of like lionesses, kind of like... <laughs> so, so, you know, they stand like, you know, ballerinas or gazelles, you know. And so, you know, that moment where I take off that bathrobe and I've got green green there! And I'm like, yo, is this? And, and I'm like, ta-da! <laughs> I'm like, mortified! I just kind of go off in between takes into a small corner and kind of, <laughs> kind of try and catch floating pasties. <laughs> <laughs> but it was such an interesting thing because then I'm dealing with that vulnerability that I feel as a human being but then I ha then then I have to turn it into power you know and so he's actually acting more like a human female he's shrinking the other end of the bar in every possible way <laughs> and then I'm and then, and then I'm just kind of encroaching on him you know so I did feel a little bit like the uh the uh, the white witch. <laughs> How much more will we see Castian Law play a role in uh, Shtama and Daytak fighting for you know the leadership position within the family? Castian Law. So last season, the last episode, we just saw the Holy <laughs> God, I don't know. I, I really like all those customs and, and, and kind of uh, that, that mythology. Um, I mean, it's constantly there, bubbling away. There are all sorts of kind of little rituals and, and kind of laws and stuff and, and castigan and stuff. Uh, I, I, I almost like it when it's not pronounced that much. So there's an episode coming up and, you know, one of the things that makes her so alien is you think she's going to react one way, that she's going to be mad with Daytac for doing this. Uh, because that's a very human response and, and it's the, the, very much the dynamic of a male-female relationship that we understand. And you see her about to have that conversation you think she's going to have and then actually she's kind of upset about this. Something completely different. And she's completely fine with him, you know, banging a hooker or whatever. But she's really upset that, you know, he used the purple tea towel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the scene's about. And you're like, it's not, everything's like... <laughs> so, uh, I like those things. There's lots of those. Yeah. Okay. In that vein, do you think she's uh, trying to kind of train Christy to be a more proper Castiffin wife, or is she going to allow Christy to be more human? I think that she will uh, train and uh, mold Christy as much as it takes for her to kind of completely control her, that relationship. I mean, I think that Stummer, because she had no control, really, culturally, um, she just takes control wherever she can get it. She just wants to control the world. Um, and actually, I think that's a very human thing sometimes. I think culturally, you know, you, you often have in a male-female dynamic and on this planet, you know, guys who haven't had to fight for it so much, by the time they get into a relationship with a woman, the woman's kind of like trying to kind of like keep everything in order and kind of control the world and the guy's kind of like, you know, why are you on my back? You know, so it's, I, I'm doing something which is recognizable, but I'm taking it to another level, which is alien. Right. Cool. Thank you so much. Have a good call.